Hello, everyone. I am Mikhail Protopopov, a rheumatologist and a researcher from Charité Medical University, Berlin, Germany. And I have an honor today to interview Professor Marco Garrida Cambrera, who is a professor at the Universidad de Sevilla and also the scientific advisor of the Axel Spondyloarthritis International Foundation, ASIF. Uh, he will be presenting the uh, oral abstract, which is called Identification of Parameters Associated with the Diagnostic Delay in Axial Spondylar Arthritis, results from the European map of Axial Spondylar Arthritis. And this abstract will be presented in the Public Health, Health Services, and Health Economics in RMD section on the Electronic Congress. So, Professor, a very warm welcome to you here. And the first question is, why in general the diagnostic delay in axial spondylar arthritis is such a hot topic? Aren't we able to set up the diagnosis of axial SPE timely given our modern uh, diagnostic uh, opportunities, for example, MRI? Well, the European map of axial spondylar arthritis survey results show us that the diagnostic delay is on average 7.4 years and can even up to 15 years. For a patient with axial ESPA who suffered from terrible and disabled pain for so many years, the question most asked is, why is this ha pain happening to me? The disease burden of the patient is huge, especially as they live without even knowing the source of the pain. This uncertainty seriously affects the axial ESPA patient's mental health, isolating the patient from family and friends. Therefore, a diagnosis introduces a specific and appropriate treatment and brings hope for the future. My background is a researcher, but it is clear that MRI has improved the ability to diagnose axial ESPA. However, not all patients can receive an MRI due to cost, availability, and delays. The diagnosis of axial ESPA is still mainly clinical and requires the expertise of our rheumatologists. You have mentioned the diagnostic delay of seven years or even a little bit more than that, which on the first sight looks like an awfully lot of wasted time. So how this diagnostic delay in axial SPA compares with the other rheumatic disease? While I can't comment on the diagnostic delay for other rheumatic disease, what I can tell you is that axial SPA patients in the EMAS study experience a diagnostic delay on average of 7.4 years. And 30% of patients waste more than 10 years. Thanks to EMAS results, we know that the first symptoms appear on average at 26 years of age, and that on average, patients are diagnosed at 33 years of age on average. Can you please tell us a little bit more about the European map of spondyloarthritis? What kind of study is that? Uh, how many patients are involved? Well, the EMAS project is a collaboration led by the Health and Territory Research Group of the University of Seville, ASIF, Novartis, and a an steering committee, including patients, patient organizations, rheumatologists, psychologists, and researchers. Novartis is also our funding partner. The study vision is to ensure that patient perspective is integrated into clinical decision making to improve the quality of life and well being of people with axial ESPA, including AS and non radiographic axial ESPA. The IMA survey began in Spain as a national project called the Atlas of Axial Spondylarthritis, promoted by the National Patient Organization, CIADE, and included a group of rheumatologists specialized in axial ESPA. Across Europe, 2,846 patients from 13 different countries participate in the survey. However, 
Currently, the IMAS survey and vision are currently being expanded globally as the International Map of Axial Spondyloarthritis, IMAS, including Canada, the US, Mexico, Costa Rica, Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, South Korea, Taiwan, and Turkey, gathering data from more than 4,000 patients from 23 countries. So it indeed sounds like a, a big global network. Congratulations. And what factors were associated with the longer diagnostic delay? Are there any? Yes, the most strongly associated parameter to diagnostic delay, according to the EMAS result, was number of healthcare professionals seen before diagnosis and younger age at symptom onset. By the time a patient is seen by a rheumatologist, they will have seen a variety of different physicians, 2.6 on average, and undertaking several unnecessary tests. During that period of time, structural damage increased. Disease education and increased collaboration among healthcare professionals who refer patients to a rheumatologist could help shorten the patient journey from symptoms onset to a diagnosis. Was there also a gender difference in the diagnostic delay? Yes, according to the EMAS study, on average, the diagnostic delay is two years greater in women compared to male, six years for males and eight years for female. Female also reported poorer physical and psychological outcomes, indicating a greater burden of disease. Historically, axial ESPA has been seen as a male disease, so that's no longer the case. And you are also uh, presenting a special poster on the, the, on the gender differences in the diagnostic delay, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so all of you interested can actually find it in the poster section. Uh, how your data com are compared with the uh, other similar studies in the field? Well, IMAS is the largest survey on axial ESPA relied exclusively on patient reported outcomes, while the majority of previous studies are based on clinical records and multicenter studies. IMAS provides a holistic and integral perspective, which is often missing in a study carried out in a medical setting, revealing the real impact of the disease in different spheres of life, including social relation, limitation in daily life, work environment, or physical health. So, and what will be your take home messages to the audience and your proposals for the future to reduce the diagnostic delay? Well, we need to increase general awareness about axial ESPA among the general population. It is essential the more people are aware of this disease, the more they understand the need to be seen by a rheumatologist. More education among GPs and other healthcare professionals, including orthopedic specialists, can reduce the patient journey with a correct referrals to rheumatologists. Professor Gary de Comprera, thank you very much for this interesting talk. And to all of you uh, who are interested in seeing the slides and once again uh, reviewing the oral presentation, you can easily find it in the public health, health services and health economics in RMD section of the Electronic Congress. See you on the Congress. Thank you, Protopop. Thank you for this interview.